it's my great pleasure uh, to be here uh, with you uh, today. Let me share my screen. Thank you very much once again. Uh, indeed, uh, it's uh, my great pleasure uh, to be here with you all. Um, for that, I'd like to thank Professor R, uh, the school management, the NTUEEE Alumni Association, uh, and the whole organization committee uh, for their very kind uh, invitation. Uh, and I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to acknowledge and thank the entire alumni body um, of NTU Tripoli. I believe alumni has also always a major role in taking uh, their schools where they are today. And I'm very proud uh, to be part of NTU Tripoli ranking among the top schools uh, globally. And surely NTU alumni has made a major impact uh, for that direction. And uh, as the faculty of NTU Tripoli, uh, I am grateful uh, to our alumni. And I am hoping to contribute more um, to our teaching efforts and training next generation scientific and technical leaders uh, from NTU Tripoli within this great body of NTU Tripoli alumni. So um, uh, once again, uh, I, I am from uh, Tripoli, uh, SPMS, uh, MSE, and uh, indeed, I'm looking after our center called Luminous, um, which is a center of excellence uh, dedicated to semiconductor lighting and displays as part of the Photonics Institute at NTU Singapore. As uh, Professor R uh, explained, uh, uh, my concurrent appointment uh, at BKENT and NTU Singapore, we work hand in hand in this uh, new emerging field of semiconductor non-crystal optical electronics, particularly for the purpose of next generation lighting and displays. And today, I hope I will to convince you that uh, this very exciting field indeed is pushing the limits uh, in lighting and displays, and uh, in some cases, uh, breaking some records. With that, I am very pleased to acknowledge uh, our center at NTU, I'm working along with our deputy director, Professor Zhang, program managers, uh, Dr. Sharma and Dr. Hernandez Martinez, and indeed a large group of faculty members from NTU uh, in Tripoli, SPMS, uh, uh, and MSC uh, have been uh, collaborating with us. And I'd like to acknowledge here Professor Zhang, Tai, Pita, Fan, Chen, Sochi, Sun, Tan. Kwang and Yujai, uh, along with our scientists, uh, Dr. Emek Göksu, Durmushoğlu, and Dr. Tsai, uh, we have a strong uh, research fellow and research body. We also work very closely with ASTAR, and I'm also very pleased to acknowledge my colleagues uh, 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 that participate in our large scale ASTAR program together with NTU. At Luminous, um, we are looking into uh, three major uh, uh, research thrusts. And today I'll be talking about semiconductor nanocrystals. When we say semiconductor nanocrystals, we refer to colloidal quantum dots uh, that are uh, quasi zero dimensional roads that are quasi one dimensional, and most recently, colloidal quantum wells, which are quasi two dimensional. They are basically automatically flat versions of these uh, nanocrystals and they're, they're the last subfamily. And I will be focusing more on the light generation aspects, uh, both light emission and lasing. But I'd like to share with you, we also put major effort for harvesting limits and soil concentrators, energy transfer phenomena, near field phenomena, bellic and metal non-antenna metal surface coupling functional media. And several of these efforts already turned into indeed uh, commercial uh, uh, activities uh, with other colleagues um, to create deep tech entrepreneurship. We also make devices out of uh, these special materials that we use as quantum imagers. We make uh, indeed high quality, high efficiency light engines. These include high brightness LEDs, non-crystal LEDs. We also push towards UV and most recently, as I'll share within just one slide, uh, we make deep UV uh, uh, chip scale catabolism devices. Finally, to complement all this effort, we also work on implantable metamaterials. Just um, to see um, the impact of our center, uh, Luminous, 
Indeed, uh, we were able to contribute over 10 uh, deep tech products development over the years, uh, a good portfolio of uh, inventions and some spin-off uh, uh, from our labs. Also, I'm most proud uh, to uh, state uh, from NTU, uh, I was able to supervise or co-supervise with my colleagues uh, up to now 22 uh, PhD uh, uh, students, and we hope uh, to contribute more to our uh, alumni body. Um, this is uh, just one slight, uh, quite recent success story, in my opinion, from NTU Tripoli. Our uh, center uh, developed, along with our collaborator, Light Lab Sweden, a new technology, um, uh, which is particularly meaningful uh, uh, for the recent uh, pandemic uh, to uh, help uh, uh, create a, a platform uh, uh, to uh, 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 achieve germicidal disinfection. And this is what it looks like. Uh, actually, uh, this is actual device, uh, several centimeters laterally and sub-centimeter vertically. Inside this, uh, we have, uh, as you see here, uh, nanowires uh, integrated very intimately in a high quality vacuum. Uh, and within this vacuum cavity, we can create high energy electron beam. And this allows us to have high optical power with uh, uh, very good efficiency levels for deep UV range. This is below 280 nanometers. And uh, we can achieve actually uh, 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 quite high germicidal efficiency. This is log six, uh, the so-called log six uh, corresponding to 99.999. 9%. And this has been already uh, licensed and uh, transferred to uh, Light Lab, where we still continue uh, for further advanced architectures of these devices. Today, uh, what I was talking about is um, the narrow crystal based color conversion and enrichment. And I'd like to start with uh, the motivation for high quality lighting and backlighting and uh, uh, showing you the merits uh, uh, along with the challenges. Then I'd like to take you uh, the next uh, 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 step, which would be laser-based lighting. And for that, I'll talk about laser crystal lasers. Uh, once I uh, discuss about uh, colloidal quantum dots, uh, which is really the first important subfamily of nanocrystals, I'd like to change gear and take you to more recent work where we also do the of quantum wells. Uh, this is now looking more into the future and show you several directions um, uh, just to share with you several ideas there before I conclude. Uh, I believe uh, for this audience it's pretty clear, uh, semiconductor uh, based lighting is the only choice for future lighting. And this is simply enabled by energy efficiency versus cost benefits. But this is not the whole story. Indeed, quality lighting is equally essential uh, for large-scale deployment of semiconductor-based light engines. And this includes general lighting, indoors, outdoors, as well as backlighting. This is particularly for the legacy TV technology, liquid crystal displays, LCDs in short. And behind the whole story is indeed there is this energy efficiency. And it's quite relevant uh, today too, because uh, we continue using about 15 to 20% of global electricity generation worldwide for artificial lighting. And in fact, using solid state based lighting, the so called semiconductor lighting through light emitting devices, light emitting diodes, LEDs, we can save uh, in the range of 50% or more depending on the photo management we do, if we hit the target performance. Therefore, uh, with this motivation, we are um, strongly motivated to continue developing uh, the more efficient light emitting diodes for white light generation. And typically there are two uh, approaches. One is multi-chip, where you would bring together different LED chips emitting at discrete wavelengths. Uh, or you would do a, a, a simpler strategy where you convert the light with some pump LED. And this could be blue LED as it is most commonly used, or for eye safety purposes, it could be cyan LED, or if you'd like to convert everything from near UV to uh, visible color, 
it could be near UV LEDs. And uh, for multi-chip, uh, although uh, uh, one can uh, have a, a, a reasonably high efficiency for uh, typically blue and red, uh, for uh, green, unfortunately, efficiency is lower. And there is always um, the driving circuitry issue because these LEDs age at different rates. Uh, because of the efficiency low uh, being in the green, there is also the gap problem. Uh, on the other hand, uh, using color converting material is wonderful because it's a low cost solution, but you have to make sure uh, you do your color conversion and enrichment carefully. And this requires the key color technology. And today, this will be the driving force for the advanced TV and lighting components. At NTU, uh, at our center, Luminous, uh, we have the capability to actually design and grow these crystal platforms. These are epitaxial LED wafers. This is what it looks like. Uh, these are from our labs. And then we can actually study in a modular fashion and systematically all different layers um, that we need to make the best semiconductor epitaxy. And over the years, indeed, uh, we uh, put major effort uh, to develop uh, such high quality crystal platforms. And then at NTU, uh, in Tripoli, using our clean room facilities, we can fabricate these devices. This is what it looks like at the wafer level. Uh, you can see a full wafer um, here. Uh, you can see many of them side by side. And this is one just being focused under microscope in operation. Uh, again, over the years, uh, we developed different technologies at uh, Luminous. Um, these are four different generations of devices. Uh, starting from left to right, we have lateral chip, flip chip, vertical, and reverse vertical. As you go from left to right, indeed, the device complication uh, complexity increases. You can see increasing number of lithography steps. Uh, this is wonderful, and it provides us the ability to have higher optical output powers. This is indeed to target different segments for variety of applications. However, however this doesn't come for free. It means uh, we will have lower yield as we go to more uh, complex device architectures. Uh, this was, again, with NQ to Singapore, uh, successfully commercialized and uh, indeed uh, turned into a spin-off company which uh, now uh, completed its exit. So at NTU, uh, a, a picture from our MOCVD lab, um, uh, we can start from scratch. Uh, this is Sapphire. Uh, we can design our epitaxy layers, grow them, fabricate them, and package them as we need. And if we wanted to do the packaging, we could actually use, again, what we develop in our labs, high quality semiconductor color converters made of nanocrystals, so these luminophores as color converters indeed serve as uh, also uh, what some would call in literature nano luminophores. Um, this uh, therefore has been indeed a paradigm shift uh, uh, almost uh, uh, one decade ago um, because uh, previously it was believed that uh, using conventional continuous broad emitters, uh, one can achieve better white light. And our hypothesis was, uh, uh, on the contrary, using discrete emitters, uh, which would be formed of number of uh, sharp uh, emitters, such as uh, colloidal quantum dots. Uh, you see some examples of that. With right strategy combination, we can do better. And this is now uh, quite well recognized, particularly for the red region. And in uh, commercial world now, you can find actually best uh, LEDs uh, using nanocrystals to have this type of discrete uh, boosters. So uh, this type uh, uh, broad emitters are actually quite nice because uh, they are quite robust, but since they are very broad, it is difficult to uh, control and fine tune the spectral details of such emitters. Uh, you could use just one uh, uh, color converter, yellow, quite broad. You would still uh, hit the white light point, but your photometric properties would be very low. These are some figure of merits known as color rendering index and color temperature. Color rendering index showing that the quality of the light source to reflect the true colors of the object, and this would be quite low. And um, you would also suffer, suffer what we call cool white appearance. Basically, collator color temperature would be just too high. 
You can use red and green together, then you can indeed improve these metrics, uh, have better rendering capability and make it warmer. But then because you have too much red broad actually falling over the human eye sensitivity uh, window, uh, you would suffer from reduced efficacy. This will be basically spectrally inefficient light sources. There are also other uh, related issues. On the other hand, using such discrete emitters, uh, which are sharp quantum emitters, we can hit all the metrics we need. We can make it warm. Uh, we can make it high rendering. At the same time, it could be spectrally efficient. So it's absolutely superior photometric performance. But then there are other issues one has to take into account. Today, large-scale production has been addressed, but one has to come up with the right routes, right strategies to address stability and eco-friendliness. Uh, that has been our focus to make quality white LEDs using nanocrystal based color converters with carefully engineered spectral content of emission. And this was indeed a debate that came out in photonics community uh, 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 about 10 years ago, showing that uh, this type of conventional uh, color converters uh, known as phosphor, including rare earth elements, indeed is an issue because um, uh, this is available in only certain countries and used as uh, international negotiation chip uh, because you can't find it all around. Uh, on the other hand, semiconductor and commercial machines are abundant. And we were asked to contribute to this discussion in the community, pointing out that semiconductor and crystals can also photometrically outperform conventional phosphors. And today, uh, this is among the best performance achieved uh, in terms of uh, uh, color metrics, um, uh, again, obtained using uh, nanocrystals, in this case, colloidal quantum dots. And this quite recently turned into a large scale project with our colleagues from ASTAR at NTU. So for the next five years, we have more work to do uh, in this uh, exciting direction. Uh, just to look at how it works, it's actually quite simple. You could use this intimately on a direct uh, LED platform, or you could do it in a remote configuration. In either case, you need to put together your color converters. They could be actually layered, or it could be all together, but you have to be careful in how you'd like to optically pump. And then you need to make sure that the interactions uh, in between are taken into account. Finally, um, you have to make sure the uh, remaining blue along with the converted red and green actually provide you collectively the right white point along with the targeted photometric performance. Therefore, one has to carefully look into all these physical mechanisms. And indeed, um, uh, this is a little bit more complicated than it looks. Uh, in quantum processes, we really have to carefully understand all these photophysical processes. And um, if there are those interested to uh, hear uh, more about this, uh, we had several reviews over the years to discuss these issues. Uh, one is uh, given as a reference here, uh, another one here uh, given again as a reference. So with that in mind, um, for the last uh, 30 years, uh, this is surely over two decades uh, in, in increasing effort in the community. Uh, we have been developing semiconductor nanocrystals, and this is quite high crystal quality. Coming from conventional epitaxy uh, background, for me, it is always so impressive with such low cost setup, how high quality material we can achieve. And uh, this is, in my opinion, uh, uh, one of the greatest strengths of such semiconductor nanocrystals because they are solution-based synthesized, which means they are also processed in solution. And this opens up a completely new uh, a venue for us to apply them in large area uh, if we get the uh, processing conditions right at very low cost. So these are quite uh, applicable for large area uh, uh, applications, um, uh, provided that the conditions are achieved. And uh, in this synthesis, we can get shape, size, composition, well-controlled, well-tuned, and we can target specific exonic properties. And I'm very pleased to acknowledge some of the pioneering groups over the years uh, that indeed helped to uh, shape uh, uh, nanocrystals that we can achieve very routinely in our labs today. And in our lab today, uh, we can actually hit the peak emission wavelength within one to two nanometer precision each time. This is, to me, a great level of reproducibility. 
And with certain chemical routes, we can make them quite narrow. It turns out that given our calculations, if you have a spectral uh, window within a uh, full width of maximum of less than 30 nanometers, actually for human eye, it is spectrally pure. pure. So this high color purity is another benefit. Uh, for certain routes, including uh, those especially cadmium containing, we can make quite high efficiency or 95% in solution reaching near unity. And uh, in certain cases, cadmium free options can also match uh, this high level of performance. At the end of the day, being semiconductor, uh, I think one benefit comes uh, inherently, and that is uh, as long as you are below the absorption band edge, uh, you have the ability to pump these. Uh, materials. So broadband and strong absorption is surely a forte compared to phosphors, because phosphors, including rare earth elements, they have only very limited absorption band. And even if you get the emission wavelength right, 90% of the time, you will not have the absorption band right. So most of these type of uh, phos very promising phosphor materials are screened out because of the mismatch for the absorption. Finally, uh, photo bleaching, photo and thermal stability issues uh, are well addressed uh, with right configuration of uh, such emitters, where instead of having only single core, uh, you can actually have multi shelf structures and you can uh, introduce additional barrier uh, uh, materials. Uh, so uh, from our lab, uh, uh, we have over the years uh, generated a large volume of nanocrystals and we worked uh, with uh, many, many partners worldwide. And uh, you can see a list of them from academia and companies. I'm sure you can uh, actually uh, uh, pinpoint some of them. Uh, we did projects with Samsung, Osram, uh, just to count few. And our focus has been uh, more on the LED lighting and displays. Here are some early examples from uh, literature. We have been uh, pushing for this type of high quality lighting uh, for uh, monocrystal uh, packaged uh, LEDs, um, along with uh, displays and more recently uh, uh, for lasing platforms. But applications on monocrystals actually go beyond this. Although uh, we don't have as much effort at NTU Luminous and our operation at Beacant, um, uh, in the community, uh, there is strong effort for single photon sources, solar cells, while labeling, imaging, and sensing uh, using this type of nanocrystal emitters. Um, if you would like to look at how uh, display technologies evolved over the years, uh, we find out that uh, we have been thus far indeed focusing on making large format and flat TVs. This is mainly uh, as we do so for the purpose of increasing the resolution. So there has been shift to liquid crystal displays and today that's the dominant technology in the market. And in the way, uh, actually the weight thickness and cost of uh, each TV unit has been reduced, uh, but uh, the improvements in, res in resolution has been just incremental. What is coming up now is actually quite more exciting. And this is all enabled by color technologies. Color technologies will be the key. And the ultimate goal is to create hyper-realistic display experiences. These are just some examples here. This is actually a car windshield. You will see this type of augmented reality displays where actually the driver will be guided uh, through this type of uh, uh, visuals. Uh, in the future, you will see this type of wearables, which will have, uh, for example, projection displays or direct displays uh, made of in the array of um, nano uh, 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 or micro LEDs. So displays will be everywhere and um, the color quality will surely reach um, the one in nature and will surely tend to go beyond. This is still on the way. And uh, the brightness level uh, will be pretty much like in real life. And finally, we would like to have wider viewing angles. Uh, and in this uh, quite uh, recent development, we will see more and more flexible and durable displays. So there is a lot of excitement going on, and this is really enabled by the nanocrystal development. This is mainly quantum dots, and we are talking about billion range uh, market. Surely this, is, this will be actually exceeding 10 billion. 
And indeed, if we look at what has been happening, uh, there is also major investment uh, uh, action ongoing worldwide. Just to give one example, Samsung already announced to invest 11 billion US dollars uh, in uh, nanocrystal uh, LEDs in the coming years. So um, this is now very exciting. And uh, indeed, if you look at the market for forecast, we see a very rapid development with uh, uh, slightly more than uh, 30 percent. So the uh, market will just keep growing. Uh, and behind all this uh, is, as I mentioned, uh, uh, being my major takeaway point today is the color size. We need to look at the visual equity, visual performance, and visual comfort, and there are a lot of metrics to define them. In the interest of time, I won't go into details of each. Uh, this is what we study to understand color science of nanocrystals as discrete emitters. And what we find is, uh, as benchmarks, these are all technologies, incandescent, fluorescent, white LEDs using rare earth containing phosphors. We do significantly much better with nanocrystals in pretty much every aspect altogether, including high luminous efficacy of optical radiation while providing high rendering capability and right warm white shade. At the same time, uh, with the ability to have high scotopic photopic ratio, this is a special metric to quantify the ability of the light source to be used both indoors and outdoors. Indoors, when we have a lot of photons available to our eye, photopic regime. Outdoors, when we have fewer uh, uh, photons available to our eye, known as scotopic. So dark adapted vision, photon adapted vision, and with high SP, it would work both well. So what we found is with nanocrystals, we can perform really well. And particularly, red component has to be sharp. And there is one critical wavelength. Uh, uh, hitting that uh, will give you a lot of benefit and not hitting it will create penalty. Um, so uh, only very small fraction of the possible spectra can actually achieve such ambitious performance. Um, but this is very interesting for us as scientists in the field, obviously we ask what are the limits and what we find is indeed rendering about 90 is possible. However, um, if you'd like to increase spectral efficiency at the same time, there is a fundamental trade-off and this trade-off becomes even severer if you go towards warmer white light. So making warm white shade with high rendering and high spectral efficiency at the same time is very challenging and there's surely a limit. Good news is we still have good room to operate uh, with uh, a high level of performance. Uh, uh, the same goes for uh, scotopic vision. This is, as I mentioned, dark adapted vision. And this will be the case when uh, you don't have enough photons making to your eye and human eye will have size sensory curve shifting. Therefore, when uh, you have photon adapted versus dark adapted vision, the sensory levels are different. One has to design the LED accordingly. What we find is all light sources uh, that are used today for outside lighting, this is road lighting. This indeed includes uh, all type of uh, high pressure, uh, low pressure, uh, 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 HPS uh, light engines, they fall below 2.5 SP ratio. We can make our devices above that. And this means actually under the same operative conditions, we can provide brighter uh, perception and enhanced nighttime vision. So this is all exciting and we have been pushing for uh, this type of nanoluminal force. I think um, many scientific issues today have been addressed, uh, except for we need to use them in right form from uh, dispersion. We need to go to solid films and we need to create high levels of stability. And this very much depends on the uh, uh, application conditions. And um, uh, there are different strategies um, uh, I'll show you one uh, where we make films like this or we make macro films like this. Uh, this is just an example with um, cadmium free option. Uh, recycling is an issue if you're using cadmium, but you need very little. You need one gram of uh, cadmium containing nanocrystals crystals in one TV. So this typically falls below the PPM requirements um, in terms of environment friendliness. Yet uh, indium phosphite options are the best. 
um, uh, for uh, green solutions. And indeed, uh, we demonstrated uh, 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 over the years that you can achieve uh, coverage uh, across the entire uh, spectrum for the first time. Uh, we have different the, the strategies, as I mentioned. This is just to make macro crystals. You basically wrap these nanocrystals crystals in larger uh, scale of crystals. This surely increases the stability. You can make all different kinds, or you can develop this type of standalone films. And this was at the time with my former PhD student developing uh, uh, more than half centimeter by half centi uh, half meter by half meter uh, membranes, and we can do even uh, multicolor. And this indeed uh, can be used uh, for a full color conversion. Uh, uh, my PhD, uh, former PhD student now uh, converted to this into a spin-off company, and uh, uh, this company is developing color converters. You can see the color quality uh, for this type of spatial uh, stand-free films versus conventional ones. Of course, there have been many other efforts. Uh, these are just some examples. Uh, this is one for remote phosphor for general lighting. This is one example from Samsung, and this is a quite recent example with our former our research partner, Osram, uh, that uh, 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 2021 uh, 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 demonstrated the first product, single package LED, including nanocrystals, for uh, the quality of uh, color metrics I mentioned. We have been working with Samsung to impart other properties, and uh, among them is to have polarizing. And this is what we can do. In addition to color enrichment, indeed, uh, we can also make it highly polarizing. Um, I will bring uh, the discussion very quickly before I stop to laser-based lighting. Of course, as scientists, we ask what is next, and laser-based lighting is critical uh, because a uh, human eye wouldn't be able to tell uh, if it is done properly, uh, whether it is laser-based lighting versus incandescent or other type of LED lighting. And therefore, indeed, uh, laser can be used for lighting purposes. And we see this will be used for high-end lighting. For example, for high-segment cars, uh, headlamps will be using laser-based lighting. Uh, and this motivates us to develop new materials uh, that are good for, uh, indeed, uh, gain. And this type of materials look, uh, as you see, high quality, quite monodispersed. And we can make lasers out of them that indeed uh, would give us uh, such uh, compact platforms. Uh, this is uh, uh, essentially uh, can be uh, uh, developed on any platform and uh, we can achieve quite high performance. But whatever we do, uh, this type of political quantum dots inherently will suffer certain properties. And the solution to address these is what we are working. And I'll just say a few words on this, given the time I have. Um, these uh, issues are all addressed using atomically flat colloidal quantum wells, and they look like this. We can put them face down or we can put them edge up. And these materials indeed uh, achieve several orders of magnitude performance compared to colloidal quantum dots when it comes to gain. And uh, the same uh, system can be developed uh, for this type of colloidal quantum wells to put into, again, a very compact optical cavity. And uh, we were able to show uh, the first uh, uh, a, a accounts of lasing from these uh, materials, a single photon, two photon uh, absorption base. And today, we can actually achieve a record performance. This is net model gain. Uh, uh, obtained from this type of material system. And to put into perspective, uh, these are the best uh, numbers reported in their classes for organic dyes and polymers, colloidal quantum dust, this is previous works, uh, rare earth doped fibers, and epitaxial quantum dust, this is, these are all epitaxially grown. And this is what you can achieve with atomically flat uh, nano crystals at room temperature. Uh, this is the best number found uh, for bulk gallon nitrite. This is cryogenic. And uh, 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 this is uh, uh, an interesting and uh, quite also promising material system, perovskites, which we also work. This is bulk perovskite, and this is the best number for perovskites, again, at uh, reduced temperature. So this material system is so exciting to uh, compare with all available yeah. materials yeah. gives us yeah. the last yeah. point. So this will... I'm sorry. 
Um, may I continue? Yes, yes. I think it was just an interference. It's okay. Continue, please. Oh, all right. Yeah, no problem. So um, uh, this uh, puts us now uh, uh, quite uh, recent work um, uh, where um, uh, I can show you uh, using uh, this type of um, nano uh, platelets uh, as we nickname them uh, in the form of atomically flat nanocrystals, uh, also known as colloidal quantum loss, and developing new uh, uh, multi-layered architectures, for example, using hot injection shell, they can achieve quite high efficiency, near un unity efficiency as synthesized. And these are quite robust material systems, uh, indeed very, very harshly washed. Uh, they still survive high efficiency. And without using any additional um, uh, protection, we can uh, actually maintain high efficiency. Uh, as well. So this material system now, uh, within the last two years, enabled us uh, to uh, 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 push the performance limits and uh, 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 break two records in two different aspects. One is LED uh, uh, fabrication, and another one is uh, in uh, solution uh, laser application. So what we found is uh, using this type of highly engineered uh, colloidal quantum mass, uh, we can actually put uh, their electrically driven LEDs on par with any other best efficiency soft material devices. This is 19% uh, um, uh, efficiency achieved, uh, and this is uh, in itself um, uh, a performance uh, limit. Um, or uh, the same material system uh, we can incorporate into a microfluidic channel, uh, which has its own uh, fabri parallel optical cavity using two parallel optical mirrors um, defined on the facets of the chip. And this type of in-solution laser enabled us to reduce the threshold three orders of magnitude. So this is basically three orders of magnitude better than any other in-solution laser um, uh, reported to date. So these are quite recent developments. And one can go further to engineer these materials. And this is now more uh, along the uh, direction of quantum engineering, uh, where we very carefully design the uh, uh, gradient barrier. So we start with the core, and we carefully choose what levels of barrier we will introduce uh, in such a three-dimensional structure. This is basically an unplated in a box. It has core, uh, uh, crown, and shell. And this then uh, gives us very surprising results, uh, which uh, allowed us to reach sub single exon level optical gain. Um, this is record uh, uh, low threshold um, uh, statistically per particle. Normally, we still are in the biextonic uh, 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 gain regime, but in the ensemble, we can reduce the overall uh, uh, population inversion point so much that uh, per particle the average happens to fall into sub single level. And this allowed us to op show uh, quite continuous uh, non disrupted operation for um, more than 10 hours. Um, and uh, these material systems now, we put in ensembles all face down or edge up to make even better devices. This is what it looks like. We can actually build them up. Uh, this is at the cross section. And uh, these uh, materials, in addition to valve control in orientation, we can dope them. And this is also a very new direction we are exploring. This brings me to the end. Uh, I hope I was able to today uh, uh, share with you that this type of colloidal nucleus enable high performance color per platform. This is for color conversion and enrichment. And this will be the key to drive the advanced uh, TV market today. Uh, colloidal quantum wells as the latest subfamily of nanocrystals actually also offer excellent optical gain media. Uh, and as I showed you at the very end of my talk very quickly, just uh, two new directions, stacking these materials and orienting them in 3D in the ensemble and developing uh, layered uh, constructions out of them and doping uh, them uh, for a, a number of purposes actually our new tools and will be uh, our interesting playground for the next several years. Uh, just to give you a future perspective, uh, Nanocrystal is leading uh, the TV market. Uh, we will see the displays to be emissive fully in the future, um, though this will take over 10 years. 
you will see uh, the legacy TV platform, which is liquid crystal displays, will be replaced by uh, particularly quantum dot base or similarly quantum emitter enabled LEDs. And they can be in the micro or nano LED array format. But today, uh, for sure, uh, in the next 10 years, uh, nano crystal base and connector display technologies are pretty much on every mainstream roadmap for the industry. And I'm also very excited to show you that uh, along with ASTAR, uh, our colleagues, um, we are uh, in a large scale program and we will be developing nano antenna light emitting devices for a number of purposes as quickly illustrated here. Uh, finally, I'd like to promote for those interested to read more for the colloidal world. Uh, there's a recent publication that came out uh, uh, from Cambridge University Press uh, with my co-author and close colleague, uh, Sergei Gopinenko, to explain more the challenges and future prospects. And this brings me to the end, just to highlight uh, those that are interested uh, to visit our labs and to work with us, we'll be more than happy to have the opportunity. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your kind interest and time. Thank you.